Well, Lord Turner was chair of the now defunct financial services watchdog, the FSA, when the Britannia merger and the appointment of Paul Flowers all took place. He joins me now. Um, when you approved Paul Flowers as non-exec director at the co-op, what went wrong? Well, that is what the inquiry will have to look at. I mean, broadly speaking, the story of the FSA on this particular issue of how we approved people for a directorships or chairmanships was a process of continual change during the four years that I was there. And we greatly improved the procedures, moved to aggressive interviews, moved to more searching approach. Now, I don't know where in that transition this particular event occurred. It was completely different by the time you know, I ended at the FSA than yeah. we were at the beginning. I think it is fundamentally changed, but we've got to look at it again and see whether there are lessons to be learned about still further improvements in that tea. Unique. Having said that, I think we should be very cautious of believing that the problems of the co-op can sure. be strongly identified with this particular individual. There were lots of executives at the co-op who had lots of banking experience. Yes. And let us remember that there were lots of people with lots and lots of banking experience at the big banks which went bankrupt, which failed, with far bigger impact on the economy in the UK and the US in 2008. So we've got to be very careful yes, of simply leaping and saying, oh, just if we had good professional bankers, yes. it's going to solve we'll, the problem. And we'll come on to that because, of course, that makes the task of whoever is trying to you know, sort the wheat from the chaff very different if they're faced with all these banking um, qualifications. Yep. But just on the question of Paul Flowers, did his appointment cross your desk? No, it wouldn't have. I mean, again, I'm pretty sure that that is the case. I don't want to get into the details yeah. of that because it's a subject to an inquiry's uh, process that will be exploring that. But it wouldn't normally have been something. I may, I may have been at informed. the stage of an non-executive director. I, 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 I may have been informed of it, but I wouldn't imagine I would have even been informed about it. I mean, one non-executive director of what is a relatively small bank yeah. would not necessarily or not naturally come to the level of the at, chairman at of the board. At that stage, but it's interesting because of, you know, I think what we understand is that as a non-exec director, the person that dealt with that was a kind of caseload worker who yeah. looked at non-execs. But then, of course, by the time he even came to be chairman, we knew, of course, that the co-op was in a, in, a, in a really difficult situation. And yet... Well, I'm not sure that that is the case. I mean, well, I think, again, I don't want to go through the details of this because this is something that should come out with public yeah. information from the, the PRA itself. But if you actually look at the very good description that Andrew Bailey, the head of the PRA, who was previously head of banking supervision, at the oh, FSA, I think he might have gave, actually gave to the TSC. I think he might have actually interviewed Paul Flores. A couple of, no, I don't, I'm not sure that that's the yeah. case, but I, I can't comment yeah. on that because I haven't gone back yeah. and looked at the, file, the files. But he gave a very good account to the TSC um, a, a couple of weeks ago of what occurred. And that makes it plain that a lot of the problems of the co-op really only became clear in the course of 2011 and 2012, when I actually think the FSA did a very good job of making sure that the fundamental yeah. questions were being asked before and making sure they did not go ahead with the Verde acquisition unless those questions were asked. But is it the vetting procedure itself, I mean, have you ever turned a candidate down? Oh yes, they were turned down occasionally, yep. A and what does but it again, take to again, for a candidate to be blocked? As you say, the difficulty is, of course, because when you actually have, not people at Paul Flowers, there's such a limited banking yeah. experience, but you're actually having senior bankers who are making massive mistakes. Well, I think this is the crucial point. I mean. The co-op is an important issue, but it has not involved taxpayer support and it has not involved a deposit of losses and it is not a massive big bank. But Back in 2008, in order to stop deposit of losses and a complete collapse of the banking system, we had to put taxpayer money in the UK and in the US into banks which had people with thousands and thousands of years of banking experience. There was nothing about that banking experience which stopped those banks reaching, reaching problems. And what I think that illustrates actually is that although we talk about these issues of interviews mm -hmm. and vetting and licensing, I think they're less important than some really structural but issues about why the banking system is unstable. But when it comes to the takeover of uh, Britannia and, and the possible takeover of Lloyds, do you think there was pressure put there for the code to be successful? No, I, I, the FSA, I think, did its job correctly. The FSA looked at 
the capital requirements in relation in but particular to the Verdi. But it kind of looked good Verdi. for a challenger bank, didn't it, to be one? You well, know, I, again, I, I think that has to be left to, you know, mm. the inquiries, etc. But all I can say is the FSA quite clearly, as Andrew Bailey set out to the TSC, you know, did its job in relation to the Verdi acquisition. It asked the right questions, uh, and moving, I think that is substantive Very, and very briefly moving on to the question of payday loans. I mean, the, the, the whole application for payday loans doubled under your uh, tenureship of the FSA. Are you glad now the government has put a cap on well, the Well, personally level? I am. The, FSA, the, the, the FCA only gets responsibility for anything to do with consumer credit in March of last, next year. I remember saying to the board and to my successors, one of your biggest issues will be consumer credit, and I think it is a very big issue for society, and I think we need to take some pretty tough action. It is, and thank you very much indeed.